Timura Daf Chavzayin. I'm back in Timbavari Game Reserve. Behind me, there are 14 lions eating a small buffalo. So I'm going to try to make this quick before they try to eat me. The Mishnah discusses different lashayinas, different languages that one might say Zu Timura Zu, or perhaps somebody says Zu Khalifa Zu. Those are both good languages for Timura. But if somebody says Zu a lashon of chilu doesn't really apply to an animal without a blemish, and therefore, if the animal is without a blemish, it doesn't mean anything. But if the animal has a mum, it goes out to chulin, provided that that animal of chulin is worth as much as the one of hegdish. And for now, we will continue a little later. So I'm back in the lodge. Truly, Marabu Masecha Hashem, unbelievable creations that Kosh Baruch Hu created. I was able to make the bracha, B'Shem Amalchus, Baruch Mishana Abriyos. I'm I'm in complete awe. But continuing with the Gemara, the Gemara says, what about if a person says the lashon Zu Tachazu? The Gemara brings two psukim that the word Tachas could go either way, can mean either a chilul or can mean Tmura. So which one is it? Says the Gemara, Chacham decided. That it all depends. If we're talking about Kachi Bedek Habayis, which can't be Tmura, so Chacham decided that what this person meant was Chilu. But if we're talking about Kachi Mizbeach, then it also depends within Kachi Mizbeach. If it's a Tam that doesn't have a blemish, then he meant Tmura. But if it has a blemish, here's what's interesting. If he puts his hand on the animal that ha- that's, that's Chulin, so he meant that it should be Kaddish. And if he put his hand on the animal that's Hegdish, he meant Chilu. Now the Gemara goes through different scenarios and combinations of animals. What happens, says the Gemara, if a person has a few animals, one is a Balmum and one is not a Balmum. Do we say that a person would rather do something better than Be'isr? Or not. So he has in front of him two animals that are Kaddish and two animals that are Chulin, and he doesn't put his hand on them. Do we say that since he could do something better, what he meant was Chilul, or no? What he meant is Tmura. And on the Tzad, that we say that a person, if he could do a Heter, he does Beheter. So what happens if one of the animals of the Hegdish has a mom, and the other one doesn't have a mom? So obviously the one that doesn't have a mom, he meant to say that it's Tmura. But on the one that has a mom, it should be Chilo. Or maybe, no, since he's already doing Tmura, he's being over on two things. Or perhaps, whatever he could do Beheter, he does Beheter. On that side, that whatever he could do Beheter, he does Beheter. So what if he has three animals? And he does the Roiv Tmura, Roiv Beisr. Does he mean to do all three Beisr? And finally, the fourth suffix is, what if he has four animals? And three out of the four, he did Beisr. So now really, he has a chazaka, he's chuchzak, that he's doing Yisurim. So maybe he did the Isra on the fourth one as well. If a person is mechalal, an animal that he has, that has a mom, so it goes out, l'chulin. However, if the chulin animal is worth less than the hegdish, he has to make it up. The question is, if this halach that he has to make it up is the reis or the rabbana. Now, I apologize that I don't have any graphics because I'm on vacation, but we'll have to do with what we have. According to one terrorist in the Gemara, if it's exactly a shtos, we're talking about an ina now, if it's exactly a sixth, then you don't have to give it back. There's no ina in hegdish. If it's more than a shtos, it's machlogis, rabbiyoyna, and rabbiyirmiya, what Rabbi Yechon and Rav said. One says that Rabbi Yechon says Mide Raisa, and Rav Shlokish Mide Rabbana, and the other one says the opposite. Rav Shlokish Mide Raisa, Rav Yechon Mide Rabbana. According to another terrorist in the Gemara, according to Rav Shlokish, even if it's less than a sixth, Mide Raisa, you have to make it up, and because by Hegdish, there's no concept of Eina. Even though we said that by Hegdish, Eina Eina, the Hegdish, what it means is, Hegdish is not in the parsha of Eina, meaning even less than a sixth, even a, anything, a fraction of, 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 a, 
shekel, whatever it is, you have to give back to Hegdash. And according to Rabbi Yochanan, I know until Shtos is Midrabana. More than a Shtos, there you have the Machloikis, Rabbi Yirmiya, Rabbi Yoyna, whether Rabbi Yochanan is Midraisa or Midrabana. Therefore, if you had your animal appraised by two people, if you hold that to make up this Aina is only Midrabana, so if three people came along, three appraisers said that they made a mistake, you have to be Mashlam. But if you started out with three people, then you don't have to be Mashlam, you don't have to make it up. But if you hold that to make up is Midiraisa, then it doesn't matter how many people you started. Even if you started with three people and they made a mistake, you have to be Mashlam. So if the person says, Tachas Chatazu, and he points to this Chatas, or Chatas in my house, then Dvar Kayomim, what he says is good. But if he just says in the ear, Tachas Chatas, Tachas Oila, it's nothing. However, Meir disagrees, and he says, Ein Adam Moitzi Dvar Levatala, the person doesn't just say things in vain, so therefore he meant the Chatas in his house. What if a person says on a non-kosher animal, or an animal that has a mom, he says, this animal should be a chatos. Now we know a non-kosher animal, like we saw earlier, those lions cannot be chatos. So the halacha is, you sell it as is. But if he said it on a nekeva, he said, this nekeva should be an oila, and the oila has to be a zachar. So according to Chachamim, tirachet tistoiv, you let it graze until it falls a mum, then you sell it. And according to Rabbi Shimon, you sell it as is, have a wonderful day.